I specialise in forensic anthropology, which is concerned with analysing skeletal remains. Any time that skeletal remains are found, I go out to the site to assess the importance of that particular find. This skeleton I came across up in Northumberland and what had happened essentially was that it's a field that's been farmed for generations but the burial was quite deep and it's only by accident that this year they moved the top stone with the machinery and as it moved all the farmer could see was the head from underneath. As a result the archaeologist was called who then ultimately called me and they got very, very excited because it's been a very long time that we have found a kissed beaker burial up, up north. I mean, this one in particular, based on the pottery that was found, we knew that it was Bronze Age. So we're looking at approximately three and a half thousand years ago, which is absolutely amazing for that particular region. Because like I said, we've not seen anything in a long time up there. What we tend to do as anthropologists is we conduct something called a profile. And that profile usually consists of um, whether it's a male or a female, how old they were when they died, how tall they were, ancestral background, and also if there's any pathology of trauma, so have they got any healed fractures, any infection, and things like that may help us to interpret the lifestyle and possibly manner of death as well. Where this skeleton it's well preserved considering the age, but it is poorly preserved for us to do any specialised analysis. So what we can do is do visual assessments of the bones, looking at the shape and the overall size of each particular element. There are metric assessments available, but because of the extent of the damage, we won't be able to use the metric analysis because some of the areas of the bone are actually worn or, or broken down so we can't take the right measurements. Visually what we can do is determine um, the sex of the individual, determine the age, determine how tall they were and also their ancestral background. So we can still get a really nice profile of who this person might have been but with regards to pathology and trauma unfortunately due to the damage most of that has 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 been lost this has kind of allowed us to think that there is potential out there so we do need to go back to other sites and other areas up there it was found essentially by accident which is the beauty of some of these things that there's so much history out there that we don't actually know is there so what I'd like to do is go back up and actually maybe have a look at using ground penetrating radar and technology like that to be able to identify, okay, are there any other burials? Is there actually a settlement there that we didn't know about, which may hopefully enrich our cultural and historical knowledge of, of the area. I think that skeletal remains not only in modern populations, but in archaeological contexts, are massively underappreciated in terms as a source of information. You know, you can get pottery, you can get amazing buildings, but they don't tell you the health of the person. They don't tell you how many men and women were there, how old were they when they died, did they have a particular condition, were they all infected with something. With regards to learning from them, we can look at where certain infections have come and gone across the world. So on a global scale, you can kind of map where we've migrated to and from and you know how we've evolved and all that sort of stuff, which I think is underlooked and underappreciated because I get, oh, it's just a bone. But actually it's not, it's our history and potentially even our future because what we can learn from them, we can put measures into place to prevent other things from happening. So I, I think they are the unsung heroes of, of information. Thank you.